Well, welcome to the new uh, set and look at the Trade Secrets with Jack Price set. Yes, hail Caesar. <laughs> and you see my beauties in the back, Natasha Korsakova, Janice Martin, and Allison Eldridge. Um, these are eight foot posters that they provided for my new set. Actually, we had them from a convention in any Price Rubin artist is welcome to um, contribute to the set. We can change these posters every so often. Just ask uh, one of our people, Rebecca or Olivia about, uh, or Anne, about these posters that are available for purchase. Send them to me at the set and uh, at the show, and we'll put them on and interchange them. Anyway, this is the new Trade Secrets with Jack Price. I'll be doing these from my... Uh, uh, office in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't often get to Los Angeles or uh, Sacramento or Chicago where I have, or Albuquerque where I have other people working there and we could do shows. Uh, but when we do them um, from those locations, I'll let you know. Today, I want to talk about briefly about management. And I know we've been talking about management the whole time. But I had an experience, which I've repeated many times, uh, watching ball games. I watched the World Series this time around. By the way, go Cubbies. Yes, I was born in Chicago. I'm really a St. Louis fan, a uh, Cardinal fan, but uh, for obvious reasons. I've you talked ad nauseum about Paul and Dizzy Dean and, um, you know, Bob Gibson and all that. So uh, it's obvious I'm, I'm for St. Louis. But this time around, you have to... You know, if you live in Chicago or were born there or hail from there, you've got to go with the Cubs. So, good job, Cubbies. Anyway, management. So, I'm watching these two managers in the seventh game of the World Series, and I'm thinking, like all of us, why is he leaving that pitcher in? You know, why was the Cubs, I won't refer to the names. <clears throat> I do know them, by the way. But there was a certain pitcher on the Cubs who almost knocked his catcher unconscious. <laughs> and uh, then the uh, big, big, tall lumberjack uh, reliever, uh, quite well-known and very effective reliever of the Indians, also threw a bad game. And then there was another reliever on the Cubs, that, their ace, actually, who came in and, you know, didn't do very well. And, you know, the game went late and rain delay and the whole thing. But the whole point is, why do they leave these pitchers in? Throughout history, when I've been watching, all the way back to, you know, Whitey Ford and Tommy John and Ron Guidry on the, on the uh, Yankee team that was so famous with uh, Reggie, Mr. October, and all that. I can't figure out why they keep these guys in. So, I, it finally dawned on me. And it, ref, it, it has a reference to arts management uh, art, artist management, uh, or management of any kind. If you're managing a, a business, uh, a small business, a large business, you know, something like John Deere. I mean, it must be very difficult to manage the business, just as it's been difficult to manage premium management here. Although we've had a major breakthrough in that area. And so I'm glad to say that it's really going quite well. But why does a guy a manager of a Cubs team leave a reliever or a starter in for a particular long period of time, especially when he's giving up hits and errors and runs. Why? Well, there are things that are behind the scenes that we don't know about. Well, one thing we do know about is what if he doesn't have anybody better that he thinks can go up against the next hitter, whether he's a lefty or a righty, uh, strategically, you know, you want to line up pitchers with hitters and um, try to get them out. So we may not know what's in the manager's mind. So a lot of my friends are saying, you know, second guessing, why is he leaving that guy in? Why is he not taking him out? This is the reason. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We assume that he's a buffoon. We assume that he doesn't know what he's doing. But in fact, he might know what he's doing. On the other hand, there's that margin of error. He could leave a guy in too long, even though he feels he doesn't have anybody that could strike out the next 
six or seven hitters on the opposite team. So he leaves them in thinking that, well, maybe he'll settle down and the errors will settle and the runs will settle. And, oh, well, forget about that home run that he just hit on the other team. There are a lot of little things that go into these equations. So the, the real moral of the story here is management is tough. It's not easy to second guess a manager why he does this, why he doesn't do this, this other thing. If you're in this situation, you're going to make mistakes. If you're a manager, you're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, not just managers. But management, people think that management is some sort of lofty thing where nobody makes a mistake and they know what they're doing. Well, yeah, they know what they're doing, or at least good managers do. If they're talented managers, they have a strategy, strategery. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, it's, it's a little of this and a little of that. So you can't second guess management all the time and wonder what their next move is, or, oh, they should have done that, or if I was there, I would have done this. But yes, it is very frustrating to watch a ball game or watch, let's say, your manager, whether it be at a big management firm or a small boutique firm, and you wonder, what's going on? Are they doing anything? Is my career just wasting away? Am I getting any calls? Well, here you have reports to look at, and they're pretty clean. I believe in transparency and accountability, and that's why Everybody here gets a second-by-second real-time report. You just go into the system called uh, Tempo, which is a part of the Price Rubin site series. And um, it's not a part of the actual site, but you go in there and you check it out. But the point is, management can make mistakes. And I think to avoid these mistakes, managers should do their homework. In the case of a ball club, you have to know every hitter on the other side. You have to know, you know, their their swing. You have to know where they normally spot hit. You have to know if they spray the ball all over the field or if they're going for the long ball all the time. Then that's easy. You can throw them an outside curveball or a slider or a sinker and, you know, probably get them out. But then again, you have control problems there. There's so many variables. So management um, is not easy. Uh, being a player is not easy. Being an artist isn't easy. There, nothing is easy. So there you go. Another moral of the story. You never know. Like Joaquin Andujar used to say, you never know.